Hi, United Recovery family. I think we've all gotten a lot out of this month as we've been going through this message series on freedom and what it is and what it isn't and how it can really help us and where we can get into trouble. And I want to conclude the series today uh, by talking about the freedom of second chances because that's something that we find in recovery and that's something that we find in our faith. One passage that the first time I read it from the Alcoholics Anonymous big book has, has really stuck with me and it honestly surprised me the first time I read it. It really made me think about why they say it like this? What, what were they getting at? And, uh, th this is what it is. It, it's written uh, to describe what someone is going through uh, to family members of that person. And uh, it's written a long time ago, so it uses male dominant language, but I'm gonna read it like it's written, but please just substitute your own language, however it's helpful for you. But this is what it says. Though it is infinitely better that he have no relapse at all, as has been true with many of our men, it is by no means a bad thing in some cases. <laughs> and I really wrestle like, why are they saying relapse isn't a bad thing in some cases. Now, in some cases, it's it's a very bad thing. Some of us have seen people lose their lives in relapse, but here AA is saying there are times when it's not a bad thing. Here, here's what I think they're they're getting at there: that we have a freedom in our recovery to try again. We have the freedom of a second chance, a third chance. I heard one time, and I don't know if the statistic is entirely accurate. But for the average person, if you struggle with a substance abuse addiction, and probably this would hold true for any compulsive behavior, that uh, it takes you eight genuine tries before you find sobriety. Now what that means is for everyone who finds lasting sobriety on their second try or first try, there's someone who it took 15 or 16 tries, right? And if two people found it on their first try, it might be that there's somebody who it took 32 genuine trials to, tries to average out to eight. Now, when we do relapse, what's important in those moments, uh, when we do take a step back, or even, even if we don't go to the point of relapse, even if we go uh, simply get into some bad ways of thinking, uh, what's important to remember is that we do have another chance. And that we have a chance to grow stronger because of this than we could have before. I often think of relapse like climbing a mountain and that sometimes when things like this happen, it's not that we fall all the way down the mountain, it's that we fall and we skin our knee. And if we don't give up on ourselves and we get back on track uh, and we accept the grace that God gives us to start again, we can keep that climb to a new way of living, a new freedom, a new happiness. Uh, but if we fall down and skin our knee, and decide that it's hopeless, uh, that there'll never be anything good and we'll, we'll never get it, well then we're liable to fall completely off the mountain. Now, Jesus talked about this as well in, in his ministry. Uh, there's a passage uh, from Matthew 18 that, that I just love. It says, then Peter came and said to him, meaning Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? as many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times. And in, in other translations, in other places in the gospel, instead of saying 77, Jesus says 70 times seven. Now, seven is a biblical number of completeness. So when Peter picked seven, he didn't just throw out a number. He was saying seven's a number of completeness. So if I forgive seven times, surely I've forgiven enough. And Jesus is no, like 77 times. So here's the deal. If you have somebody in your life who you're fed up with and you forgive them 77 times and then you decide the 78th, like, you know, you shouldn't have to, man, if you got to, if you were still counting at 77, like you got a bigger problem than they do, right? <laughs> like you got some OCD going on there if you were still counting at 77. The whole point of Jesus is saying 77 is as many times as sinned against we forgive because that's how God treats us. As many times as we mess up, God gives us second chances. And it's important that we embrace that freedom that the second chance gives. Now, often, in so many cases, that second chance is not just a second chance with God. It's also a second chance at healing in some of our most important earthly relationships. 
There are moments, however, when because of what's the water under the bridge, because of where other people are at in their lives at that moment, we're not able to have that reconciliation with people we really wish we, we could. We can always have it with God, but we wish we could have it with others. And sometimes that's another moment when we give up on ourselves. We say, well, if I can't have that with this person, what's it all worth? And we just get, get ready to give up. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Um, that person's opinion of you, and just because you can't fix it for them, in no way means that you're not cherished by God. In, in no way means that you have less self-worth. In no way means that there is less joy and freedom available to you than to, than to someone else. I, I mean, even those of us who've never struggled with a substance abuse addiction uh, or who haven't had a compulsive behavior that uh, was coming out in such a prominent fashion that the whole world could see it, everyone walking around we've got people who think poorly of us now if you're living the kind of life where everyone who knows you well thinks poorly of you you gotta stop back and say okay i need need to look a little here but there are just times we have differences with people and there are times people are in a bad place and it causes them to think bad things of us right that that happens uh, but ultimately we're living our life for an audience of one an audience of god and nobody else, nobody gets to completely define that, define what our life's worth, who we are, or tell us whether we're worthy of freedom and happiness. Only God gets to do that. If you put anybody else in that position, it's putting them in God's position. So today I, I want to invite you uh, to embrace the freedom of second chances and the freedom of 30 second chances that, that God gives us. Uh, perhaps in your open share group time tonight, it might be a good time to ask questions about, are there places in my life that where I need to embrace that freedom of second chances? Are there places in my life where I need to embrace the freedom I have because of what Christ has done for me to offer someone else a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance? And if you get up to 76 or 77 when you're counting, come see me, let's have a conversation. I think there's some things we need to talk about. God bless you. Have, have a great, great evening, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.